This lecture covers the DuPont identity and problems with financial statement analysis. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. As we discussed in a previous lecture, return on equity, or ROE, can be boosted just by increasing leverage, or debt. In other words, taking on debt and buying back equity. In fact, we can decompose ROE into two components. ROA, or return on assets, and EM, which stands for equity multiplier. The formula for ROA is net income over total assets, and the formula for equity multiplier is total assets divided by total equity. So if we multiply these together, we can see that total assets cancel out, leaving us net income over total equity, which is, in fact, ROE. If we reward managers based on ROE, managers will simply boost leverage to increase ROE and therefore their managerial compensation without creating value for the investors. And so the question for us is, how can we structure managerial compensation to keep these crafty managers honest? So why is the DuPont identity called the DuPont identity? As you might have guessed, it originated at the DuPont Company, which is known for management innovation. My favorite story about management innovation at DuPont is regarding their dynamite operations. DuPont used to manufacture dynamite, and they had a string of terrible accidents in which many workers were killed when plants exploded. Now, a little understanding here about how dynamite plants are built. Um, dynamite plants are a series of small buildings that are located on a compound and they try to keep the buildings far enough away from each other so that when one building explodes, the debris from that building will not catch the next building on fire, causing a chain of explosions. And so don't picture a dynamite factory as being a single uh, building. Picture it as being a compound of small buildings. Now, the solution that DuPont came up with was to move the manager and his family, because back then managers were men, to move the manager and his family into a house directly in the middle of the compound of the dynamite plant. Why would they do this? Well, before, the manager was only there during the day and would leave at night to go home to his family probably didn't care as much whether or not the plan exploded while he wasn't there. But if you make the manager and his family live inside the compound 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, safety becomes suddenly much more important to the manager. The accident rate at DuPont free fell after this building of these, and they were nice homes. They would build a nice home in the middle of the compound for the manager and his family. Now, I don't think you could get away with that sort of activity today, but it's an excellent example of how innovative DuPont can be when they come to finding new and better ways to incentivize their managers. Here we have the DuPont identity. It's simply return on equity is equal to profit margin times total asset turnover times equity multiplier. We can actually break those things down by writing in their formulae. For instance, profit margin is net income over sales. And total asset turnover is sales over total assets. And as mentioned previously, equity multiplier is total assets divided by total equity. Notice that sales cancel out, as do total assets, which leaves us with net income over total equity. Once again, this is simply our formula for ROE. Many students think of the DuPont identity as just another way to calculate ROE, but it's actually much more. Recall that it is profit margin times total asset turnover times the equity multiplier. What the DuPont analysis is really doing is breaking down return on equity into three different components. Profit margin is actually a measure of operating efficiency. Total asset turnover is a measure of asset use efficiency. And of course the equity multiplier, as we've discussed before, is a measure of financial leverage. Let's talk some more about operating efficiency and asset use efficiency. There are basically two ways to increase profit margin. 
You can either increase your selling price or you can decrease your costs. Oftentimes the market competition will determine what your selling price is and so the only thing you really have under your control would be your costs. And so this profit margin measure is actually a measure of how well are you controlling your costs. And then total asset turnover is how efficiently are you using your assets. Let's take two examples. Hyundai Motors. Their plants run at around 100% capacity. And so their total asset turnover is quite high. Remember, that is sales divided by total assets. On the other hand, the plants of Chrysler LLC probably run somewhere around 60% capacity. And so they only have 60% as much sales per dollar of asset, roughly, as Hyundai. And so their total asset turnover would be much lower. In other words, they have lots of money invested in assets that aren't producing as much sales as that same money invested at Hyundai would. And now we'll finish this lecture with a brief review of some problems with financial statement analysis. First of all, conglomerates don't lend themselves easily to financial statement analysis. Recall from the lecture on ratios that we can only really compare firms within the same industry. Conglomerates, by definition, are made up of divisions from many different industries. One would have to find a conglomerate with exactly the same composition of investment in exactly the same industries in order to be able to compare between two companies. And this is almost impossible. And so we say that financial statement analysis for comparison purposes between companies is lousy for conglomerates. Secondly, we see that there are different accounting methods between countries. In the United States, we use the generally accepted accounting principles as set forward by FASB, or the Financial Accounting Standards Board. In pretty much the rest of the world, they use IFRS, or the International Financial Reporting Standard. And these have some different ways of accounting for costs and other issues which make the numbers not comparable between companies incorporated in the United States and those incorporated elsewhere. Finally, there are different methods of accounting for inventory even within the United States. The Internal Revenue Service allows American companies to account for their inventory either under LIFO, which is last in, first out, or FIFO, which is first in, first out. In inflationary times, LIFO will make cost of goods sold higher. Why? Because the last item in will have the highest price associated with it. As a result of making cost of goods sold higher, pre-tax income will be lower. And this lowers the taxes the firm owes, which is good for shareholders because taxes represent a real cash flow. On the other hand, if we use LIFO, the inventory that's left behind is valued at the old value or the artificially low value, and so the value of our assets will appear to be low if we are using LIFO during inflationary times. The effects are reversed for FIFO, which means first in, first out. Cost of goods sold is lower, which makes pre-tax income higher, and therefore taxes higher during inflationary times. But the inventory left behind by FIFO is larger, which makes your assets appear larger. And this valuation of inventory is actually more accurate because if we were to replace that inventory, we would have to pay the higher price for the new incoming goods. So which ratios would most be impacted by this difference? How about inventory turns? Cost of goods sold will be higher under LIFO and inventory will be lower. Inventory turns is cost of goods sold divided by inventory, so it will be higher under LIFO. What about total asset turnover? It's sales over total assets. Now sales won't change any, but total assets will be smaller under LIFO because the remaining inventory is smaller, and that's part of total assets. And so total asset turnover will be greater under LIFO. And what about current ratio? 
That's the current assets divided by the current liabilities. Well, inventory is part of current assets, so current assets will go down, but current liabilities will not change. So the current ratio will also be lower under FIFO. And so if you've got one company that is accounting using LIFO, and another that is accounting using FIFO, even though they're in the same industry, you can't compare one to another without performing some sort of conversion.